Hello, LGBTQ community and the straights. Welcome back to the channel. A long time ago, I made this video called I Read My Old Webtoon. If you thought that was the end of it, you are sorely mistaken because that was just the beginning of everything. Also, if you can hear my fan, that's because the fan is on, obviously. It's way too hot right now. But I'm wearing this because it's for the fit. I'm trying to look like one of those alpha males right now. When I made my first webtoon, Head in the Clouds, I thought it would just be the most excellent, genius, brilliant idea of mine to immediately drop that webtoon and start a new one. And this is how this second webtoon of mine came to fruition. Hooray! So here we are in this video today which I will be reading my old webtoon, part 2. So the webtoon is called Ghosts of Our Past. So just a little bit of background on this webtoon. I actually made this webtoon at a time where I was doing really bad mentally. I was just not in a good place at the time. So all of those pent up feelings basically brought this to life. It's a culmination of that and therefore there is going to be some sensitive, uncomfortable topics. So if you're not up for that, feel free to click off this video for the sake of your own well-being. And I don't recommend you read this either. All right? You got that? Sketch right into the nitty gritties. Hold on, can we just take a moment to look at this side profile? Mmm, yeah. Yeah. You should probably do some more studies. Do more studies. The coloring style. So the coloring style, I was in a phase where I tried to have a painterly coloring style and I wanted to apply that to my webtoon. So this is why the coloring is very dubious. What would you do? What would you say? In my case, I rather don't meet them at all. Yeah, our main character is emo because I was also in my emo phase in high school. But as we know it, fate is peculiar. I have the same exact comforter. Damn. Eventually, whether we like it or not, we have to face the consequences of our actions. At the age of 15, every teenager manifests a ghost in the form of their younger selves, or in short, the ghosts of their past. No one knows why they appear or what their purpose exactly is. Oh, or what their true purpose exactly is. I'm sorry, I can't read. However, what we do know, these ghosts are almost like a figment of the imagination and can only be seen by the person themselves. They are both a blessing and a curse. Whoa. These ghosts, however, disappear once a person reaches a stage of adulthood or maturity. Maturity more or less varies from person to person, albeit rare. Some have their ghosts disappear a bit earlier than others. I can't get over it. Damn, his chin is huge. While the majority have theirs disappear after graduating high school. Yet every few hundred years, there are special cases like me, the cursed children. Who are they and why? Well, honestly, I'd like to know too. I'm Omura Hitomi, a 26-year-old businesswoman who's got nothing going for her except her cynicality. She's not like other girls. Although I do happen to qualify as an adult, believe it or not, this might be a bit embarrassing to say, but my ghost hasn't disappeared yet. The idea of this having ghosts in the form of your younger self stemmed from a lot of self-hatred I had. And that's because in my mind, I thought that if I were to meet my younger self and they were to see me as I am now, they would surely be really disappointed. That's what I thought back then. And I just had a lot of self-hatred, a lot of guilt, and I just felt extremely sorry for my younger self because I felt like she deserved better and I couldn't do that for her because I ended up as a disappointment. So this is kind of where the ghosts of our past came to. 
So, spoiler alert, um, doesn't really matter if I tell you spoilers because I'm never going to finish this webtoon anyway. So this is actually her sister. Early in the prologue, we saw our main character at the hospital and she was sitting beside someone and that person was actually her sister. If I remember correctly, her sister got into a car accident or something and then she ended up in a coma, so she's a vegetable now. And that's why our main character was in the hospital beside her sister and her sister used to play the piano. That's why we have the piano in this scene. And that's it. Okay, back to the present. So she is an office worker. Her job is very vague because I didn't really know what people did in the offices. I don't really know what office people did at the time, mind you, because I was like 13 or 15 when I made this webtoon. So in my mind, she was working for this design company that makes designs. <laughs> for other companies yeah you get me right yeah rough night <laughs> who says a rough night who says that does anybody actually say that in real life i don't believe it okay so this guy beside her with huge head is her friend from high school his name is ali that's all i can tell you right now you'll find out more later something like that thanks Everyone's been called to meet. Apparently, there is a new guy joining today. Let's hope they aren't as troublesome as the last one. Haha, <laughs> that other one was tough, wasn't he? Ugh, don't remind me. Bustling. <laughs> oh, I hate this battle so much. I hate it so much. What is going on in here? What is going on? We have a new member joining the family today. I tried to draw an old man, but I didn't know how to draw old people back then. So, there's that. My attempt at an old man. Please welcome Miss Kato Eri. As of today, she'll be joining you in collaboration with our sister branch to work on our latest project. I don't know what sister branch means exactly, but I just thought it made sense at the time. So I put that in there. What is the project they are working on? You'll never know, because I don't know either. <laughs> Treat her well, everyone. Clap. I'll be in your care. And I don't know why she's glowing <laughs> like this, but I remember making her glow like this because she's supposed to be not human. So this is alluding to the fact that she's not human. That's why she's glowing abnormally. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, that was my thought process at the time. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not playing. Now that everyone's here, I love how the extra characters are just white people and with our new addition to the team miss kato in attendance as well let's begin the meeting okay this panel is cute it's not bad for today's agenda some changes to the front cover will be made okay i remember what their project was now they're apparently working on this um book cover for a children's book i think i think as well as blah 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 more important work once again she is glowing because she is supposed to be not human what exactly is she we'll find out more later stare she's getting on splendidly now isn't she why do you talk like that real people don't talk like that i swear and the blur the gaussian blur on this entire panel is horrendous what a huge relief that is that's her sipping the water. Don't forget, welcome party is tonight at 7, the usual place. Ugh, I completely forgot about that. Now my headache's coming back. Oh, come on now. The party ain't no fun if the team leader isn't there. So she's basically the team leader who's managing everything. I don't know. I just... I don't know why she's the team leader or what a team leader is. She dropped her water. Dude. So, as I was saying, there is supposed to be a party, and she hates parties because she's emo. It is now evening, a couple of hours have passed, and she is now at the place where they are having the welcome party. Ugh, this godforsaken place. I want to go home. And then she comes across Eddie, who appears to be quite drunk. Oh, Miss Omura, you're here. 
You finally showed up. I was waiting, you know. Come on, you're missing out on the fun. Guys, Miss Omada is finally here. So, Eddie here. There is a reason why Eddie is trying to approach our main character here. All will be revealed later. They're bickering with each other because they're both drunk and crazy. And I don't know if this is how you should act at the welcome party of your workplace because your boss might be there. Yeah. Am I forever cursed to be haunted by both drunkards and ghosts? Don't worry. Girl, you'll be fine. It's not that bad. Ms. Omowa? She's a cutie patootie. I have a secret to tell you. What is it, gulps? I'm actually an angel. Wow! Is she lying or is it actually true? Who knows? Hee <laughs> hee. I mean, as far as looks go, you do look like one. That is gay. That is gay. Internal panic. You don't believe me. Ah, oh, wait. You are, yeah, the best angel in the world. This line right here where she agrees that Eddie is actually pretty is also alluding to the fact that this woman will eventually fall for Eddie. Because I planned for these two to get together or eventually fall in love later on in the story. So, gay rights, if you know what I'm saying. But the fact that Eddie also mentioned that she's an angel once again is hinting to the idea that she is not actually human. And she's not literally an angel, but she's also not human. Oh, Miss Kato, wake up, Miss Kato. And she put ice on her face. Apparently, I heard somewhere that if you put ice on someone's face, they'll immediately wake up. I don't know if that's true scientifically, so you might want to check that on Google or some trusted source. Ah, where am I? Am I home? No, we're at the restaurant, Miss Kato. The restaurant? Come on, let's get you home. Where do you live, Miss Kato? Miss Kato, and she fell asleep again. Hey, don't go back to sleep. Ah, no, you'll fall over. Damn it, what do I do? So because she doesn't know where Eddie's home is, she takes her to her place. They're talking, they're talking, and then eventually she wakes up because of the noise to Miss Omura's. And they're both shocked because supposedly she is not able to see the ghost of Hitomi because as mentioned previously in the prologue, the only one who's able to see the ghost is themselves. So only Hitomi should be able to see her ghost, but the fact that Eddie can see Hitomi's ghost is something crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It is not normal. It is an abnormal event. Catastrophe. When your ghost lingers in the mortal world for too long, it will eventually possess you as a malicious being. That which you call malevolence is very much real and has taken many lives till today. And I fear that it will happen to me. Yes, there's no telling what will happen if you're possessed. Alright, um, so you can see everybody's ghost and now I'm going to be possessed. So Hitomi here is kind of like, is she bullshitting me or is she actually telling the truth? It's a rough night, I don't know what to do. Yes, that's the gist of it. If you'd let me, Miss Omura, allow me to help get rid of your ghost. So Eddie here offers, I can help get rid of your ghost. All right, we are now at episode 5. And at episode 5, we get to see more of Hitomi's life as a high school student. The first time I saw my ghost was a day like any other. Except for the fact that she came into my life. Three more minutes, mom confused wake up what the hell uh who tell me what's wrong there's a random kid in my room kid so as you can see her mom can't see her ghost only she can i don't see anyone though she's right here on my bed she can't see me you know what ah that's right so today guess what bum -ba -da -bum, is actually her birthday and that's why she is now able to see her ghost. Happy birthday, Hitomi. Are we celebrating a birthday or Halloween? Honestly, today might have been really shocking for you with your ghost and all that. But she's just a tiny version of you, that's all. Besides, what's more important, today is your birthday. You're 15 now. 
So hearing the words you're 15 now feels really, really overwhelming for her because she is growing up, but it feels like she's leaving her sister behind because as we mentioned before, her sister is a vegetable and she's just living her life like normal. So she feels guilty for that. She's thinking that I'm moving on with my life, but I deserve to do that. Do I deserve to be happy while my sister is in a coma? So she has some sort of guilt. So here we have Hitomi walking along their school corridor and she comes across her BFF at the time, which is this girl. So I haven't given her a name actually and at the time she was supposed to be a mystery character who was supposed to appear much later on in the story. But she's pretty much kind of like Hitomi's first love because she was the only good thing about her life at the time. So they are at this school rooftop, which is kind of dangerous actually, do not do this in real life. So they are at the roof and they've prepared a small picnic to celebrate her birthday, which I think is really cute and excited. Uh, speaking of party, wanna go get dinner, have a small celebration party, you know? Okay. So this invitation from this guy, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, it's a like it's a friend thing. You know, they're friends. Yeah, they're good friends. But this guy also has a thing for her, secretly. And there's a reason why he's kind of into her, right? Well, all will be revealed later. <laughs> As you can see, he's left chocolate and coffee, and then he's left this sort of sticky note that says, Dinner's on me, eh? So he cares about her, like a good friend. He's also into her more than a friend. I cannot raise my brow. I cannot raise one of my brows. Like, I can only do this. I can't do the... Oh, I can't. I cannot. So we cut to Eddie, who is taking her break, and she is at the rooftop of their company. So I had something for building roofs in this webtoon. I don't know why I was obsessed with roofs. And then we have this very important character here. So she just pops out of the sky and we already know that she must be some kind of supernatural being. And she says that being materialistic is no good for a wandering soul, you know. So now we know that Eddie is actually a soul and she is not, you know, human, but she's taking a human form at the moment. Especially one that's on trial. So that says something about who Eddie is. So this character here is not a god, but she's more or less a subordinate of God. And her job is to ensure that, you know, the souls can properly reincarnate. But sometimes you have wandering souls like Eddie who don't fulfill the conditions to reincarnate. And so she puts them on trial. And what that trial is, is they basically have to fulfill a mission that is given to them and, and her mission is to actually make sure that Hitomi's ghost disappears and that she actually is able to move on with her life, you know? So that is what she's supposed to do and why she's approaching Hitomi so relentlessly. What happened for her to be on trial? Did she do something bad? Well, in Eddie's past life, she actually um, committed suicide. For the gods, is like a big no-no. So this is kind of like her redemption at life again. This is Hitomi and Aoi having dinner together as friends. Where are they? Oh. So here, they're talking about this charity event. So this charity event is related to the book cover that they were designing for because it was a children's book. So the publisher said they could release a copy by blah blah blah. Not that. Isn't it going to be held at a hospital? Yeah, why? It's the same hospital, right? So that's what you're worried about. It's fine, really. Besides, this is just where work. So the reason why Aoi said that is because, as we saw in the prologue, her sister was hospitalized and the charity event that they're doing work for is actually going to be held at the same hospital. So that's why he's worried for her. If it's for work, can you forgive yourself for it too? What? It's just, as your friend, I want you to... 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 Stop clinging to the past. Okay. Obviously from... You know, those panels from the dialogue, we can already tell, hmm, he's got a little something something for her. There's a little something something between them. And what did he mean by clinging to the past? Well, as I mentioned before, 
sister got into a car accident she feels guilty for it somehow she feels like she doesn't deserve to be happy to live life so she's clinging a lot to the past a lot of us do that in a way that we have a lot of guilt that we carry because we feel bad that we couldn't do this or that in the past but to be honest no matter how much guilt you have you can never change the past and no matter how much anxiety you have you can never change the future there's just some things we can't change sometimes you just have to move on moral of the story move on here in these panels we can see that oh he cares a lot for hitomi not just as a friend though so he says that she was the only one she had huh I don't, I don't know you were the only one he had so he says that she's the only one he had back then and there's a reason for that so um backstory about ali is that he actually wanted to be a musician but he grew up under a typical asian household who was very strict about his career his future they wanted him to be a typical successful doctor or something but he didn't want to be because he wanted to be a musician he wanted to start a band but he gave up in his dreams obviously because now he's an office worker with Hitomi and the reason why he chose to become an office worker is only because of Hitomi right that is kind of crazy that's kind of crazy we are at a Z11 where they first meet and we have young Aoi here trying to buy cigarettes when he's a minor, but you can't do that. And Hitomi is the cashier. Aoi, you know, being tough boy that he is, he's like, I don't give a fuck. Just give me the cigarettes and I'll pay. But Hitomi is very stubborn. She's like, I can't sell cigarettes to minors because I'll get in trouble if I do. I don't want to lose my job. And then she threatens him by calling the manager i'll call the manager boy she's like he's like what bro and then her phone rings because her mom calls and the ringtone of her phone is actually the song from Aoi's favorite band so coincidentally they both have the same favorite songs and favorite band boom friendship and he gives her pocky instead of cigarettes because he can pretend they're like cigarettes anyways and he laughs at that because it's such a quirky girl thing to do. <laughs> okay. So he says, I'll come again. And then she's like, please don't. But he keeps showing up the day after and then the day after that. And then it became a habit for him to visit. And so now they are BFFs. They're BFFs. And he finds out that they're actually schoolmates, but they haven't met even once. Because, I don't know, the power of plot. We also find out that Hitomi is working at the convenience store but she's underage and she actually lied in her resume to get the job because she needs the money. Why is that? Because her sister was in the hospital and she needed the money. What? What is going on? The dots are connecting. The dots are connecting. The dots come together. So apparently the legal working age in Japan is 15 years old so we can assume she's like 14 around here. Nope. So Aoi here is kind of happy that he's the only one who knows that she's working there. It's kind of like their little secret. Same way the green haired girl was kind of like the only good thing in Hitomi's life for a while. Hitomi was like the only good thing in Aoi's life. So his dad is basically the reason why he gives up on his dreams because his dad tells him that, you know, starting a band, pursuing music is fruitless, it's a waste of time, but Hitomi is like, no, it's not a waste of time, BFF. Don't put yourself down like that. And he's like, whoa. He's like, I kind of love you. I think I love you. Trigger warning suicide. Please click off the video if you're not comfortable with this. You're not missing out on much. Truly, you are not. It's not that crazy. It's not that big of a deal. Here, they're talking about music because they apparently like the same band. And that's how they become friends, just like with Aoi. The power of music. Eddie here is like, why? And she feels that Hitomi kind of reminds her of her past self because something happened in the past, which is, we will get to that here. So as we can see here, we have this, we have a cloud of smoke, I think. That's what I was trying to portray, but this is basically Eddie's mother 
and Eddie's mother was possessed by her ghost because she couldn't move on. So this is the malevolence that happens when, you know, your ghost stays in the mortal world for too long. They end up possessing you and then you end up doing some crazy shit. So Eddie here was still like a high school girl and this is her mom. And then her mom, you know, was possessed by the ghost starts doing some crazy shit and she cuts herself and then she bleeds to death. Basically, Eddie's entire backstory and she ends up traumatized from that. So, yeah. So we have now reached the end that is the last episode and that is the ghost of our past. If you want to know the ending, what basically happens is that Hitomi is able to move on from her ghost with the help of Eddie, you know, she's able to appreciate her life more. She finally is able to stop feeling guilty and feel like she's at fault for what happened to her sister and that she shouldn't be happy. She stops feeling all of that because of Eddie, the power of love, the power of love. So now Eddie has fulfilled her mission and she can disappear and reincarnate into her next life but because of her love for Hitomi, because of the power of love instead of reincarnating she asks the overseer can you make hitomi's sister wake up from her coma that's her final request and that's all she really wants after she's completed her mission and she also wants hitomi to forget all about her so that she's not miserable when she's gone and that was her final request instead of reincarnating she wanted overseer to do that and overseer was like okay i'll do that so after overseer does that and annie disappears overseer is like that was the nicest thing i've ever seen a human do so she decides you know what i'm gonna reincarnate eddie because she deserves it she did something really nice she deserves to be reincarnated so eddie does eventually get reincarnated Hitomi's sister wakes up, but Hitomi forgets all about Eddie, and she ends up with Aoi. They end up getting married. Oh, that is the story. I, I don't know why I'm about to cry, but yeah. Um, I think it's a shame I really didn't finish this story. I don't know. These characters, I'm looking at them and they mean a lot to me. But I do plan on making a reboot of this, so I'm going to make another webtoon with a similar concept to this however the story will be entirely different i hope you guys enjoyed reading this webtoon with me also if you guys have not read it yet please go read my new webtoon head in the clouds which is available online i made a reboot version of my old webtoon and i actually finished it it's finished it's a short story you could probably finish reading it in 30 minutes or something please 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 read it read it because i worked so hard on it i'm really proud of it but yeah thank you so much for watching this video if you guys have any questions about this story i would be very happy to answer them because this is a story left unsaid and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye